Hi, this is John from Platform SH, and today we are going to step through a full Magento One setup on Platform SH. This is going to be a four part series. We're going to begin with basic setup, and we are going to start here on the Platform SH account checkout screen. So you can see here we're just setting up a standard Platform SH plan with one user, three environments, five gigabytes of storage. That should be more than enough to get started for today's project. We're going to choose a region here. We're actually going to choose Netherlands, which doesn't show up on your screen most likely. That's one of our beta regions, but uh, just step through the checkout wizard here, launching your project into whichever region you prefer. And this is what you should see at the completion of this step. So this means that your cluster is being provisioned into the region you chose. And so now we can go over here to GitHub to the Platform SH Magento example project. And so what you're going to do is actually clone this project into your local workspace. You can find this at github.com platform sh platform sh example magento one. Or if you just go to our main repos page, you can search for magento one and find it there. So we're going to grab this URL here. We're going to clone it into our local workspace. And we're going to open it up in our editor. So the configuration we're going to step through today should work with either Community or Enterprise Edition Magento 1. So the first file that we're going to open up is plat.platform.app.yaml, and that's going to be in the root of the Git repo. This is an application configuration file. The first thing we're going to do is actually rename this from app to Magento 1. And then we'll take sort of a brief tour through some of these other settings. You can see here, this is going to be a PHP project. Platform SH also offers a variety of other runtimes, for example, Python, Ruby, and Node.js. We have several other runtimes in beta as well. But you'll specify the PHP runtime here in this type parameter. Uh, this is Magento 1, so we're just going to leave it with the default PHP 5.6. Down here in the relationships section, this is where you'll actually perform a bit of network plumbing between some other outboard services that you will specify in another file. We'll get to those later. We're not going to need Solar or Redis for this exact video. We'll set those up in, a, in an upcoming video. So we're just going to get rid of those. The web block is some basic web server configuration. You can see this is very simple for the purposes of Magento. It just basically says any incoming request, the doc root of this one is going to be sitting in the web folder. And the front controller is this index.php file here. Very standard web server configuration stuff. A little bit further down, we have writable disk space. This is in megabytes, so we're going to give two gigabytes of writable persistent disk space to this application. That can be used for anything that you need, really. Logs, file uploads, uh, pretty much anything. And here we have the mount section, which specifies which directories in your application are actually going to be made writable. This will make a bit more sense in a moment, but your entire deployment process is going to be managed via Git, and your entire code base is also going to be managed via Git. When you push to us, we're going to build your code base according to some steps that you specify, and then we're going to deploy that code base out into the world. Once we deploy that code base, however, your entire application's code base will be set to read only. You will not be able to write to the file system. Uh, so Obviously, that presents a problem for uploading some files, so we're going to specify a couple of different directories here in this mounts section, uh, web var, web app etsy, and web media for those files to be, for those directories to be writable. And down here in the hooks section, these are basically arbitrary shell commands that you can run in order to do things at certain points in the deployment lifecycle. So please feel free to dig into those magento build and magento deploy.php scripts that you see listed here. And you can see just below that, you're able to specify whatever crons you need to run at whatever schedule. This variable section, we are going to uncomment and actually make use of. So you can see that we will specify a Magento admin user and password here. This is for the purpose of when we very first push this code base to our project. It's going to go through an initial build step, which will install the Magento database and a bunch of other stuff. So you want these settings here so that you can log in and, of course, change them later. 
So now if we hop over here into our other configuration files, these are our global configuration files. Routes.yaml is essentially just web server configuration, and we're going to change this to Magento 1 so that this incoming route that's coming in on HTTPS slash whatever our default domain will be routed accordingly to the application that we just set up in the previous file. And services.yaml is where you set up those third-party pieces of software that your application needs to run. Again, we're not going to use Solar or Redis in this video, so we're just going to go ahead and remove those. You can see that we're running MySQL version 10.0, so we actually run MariaDB. Uh, so we have a variety of different versions of MariaDB. So for this tutorial, we are going to just run with 10.0. And we're going to give it 2 gigabytes of disk space. And that concludes our whirlwind tour through the configuration. So now we can actually get back over here to the terminal and push this up to our project. So let's just do a list of our Git remotes here. We're still actually speaking to the origin is still set to the GitHub remote that we pulled this project from originally. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. And we're going to hop back over here to our project admin screen. We haven't actually pushed any code to this yet. So we're still on the very first screen here. So we're just going to name this thing Magento Tutorial. You can name it, of course, whatever you want. You can also reset that name later. We're not going to use one of our preset templates. We're going to import our existing code. So click that option, grab the Git remote information here. You can just copy and paste this command. Uh, we're just adding a new Git remote that is our platform Git remote that's going to be pointing to your uh, your project. And so anything that you push to this Git remote now will be deployed onto Platform SH. So if we run Git status, you'll see what we've got there as far as those three configuration files that we touched. So we're just going to add those and commit those. And we're going to push those up to our platform Git remote. So this is Git push to our platform Git remote to the master branch. And so the first little bit there that you see with my coworkers screaming fast European bandwidth there is uh, just standard Git output. But what you see in the second part is actually our system taking over. So every single time that you Git push to us, we're going to take not just the code change that you made, but also read down those configuration files that you push to us and build your hosting environment from scratch every single time that you push to us. So we're not just provisioning the containers as far as the application container that's going to run that it's going to run the PHP runtime but we're also provisioning the MySQL container to run your database we are running you can see this debug output here is actually the result of our Magento build uh, script that we specified in the build and deploy hooks and so this is just some handy debug output output as far as what is happening in that script you're encouraged to go through and read that uh, you can see provisioning certificates. We have a Let's Encrypt integration. So every one of your environments automatically gets a TLS certificate for free. You don't have to turn that on. You don't have to go to a certificate authority, pay them money, etc. We just take care of it for you. And now that all that is done, we are actually launching this into its environment. So the containers have been provisioned and we've done the network plumbing between everything. And our build step is basically complete. If you hop over here into your project admin again, you can actually click on the, uh, let's see, this, this little log. This will give you uh, an identical log to what you're seeing here in standard out. And so with that, our project is now launched. So if you just kind of look under creating environment, you can see uh, two different things here, Magento 1. These are at, this is actually a list of the different containers in your project. So Magento 1 is your PHP runtime. MySQL DB is the other container that holds your database. And now if we just grab this route, this URL here, and plug it in, you can see here we are on our new Magento homepage. So, uh, so congratulations. It was that easy to set up Magento hosting for, uh, for your site. So if we go to admin course that works exactly like you expect and you can log in with the credentials that you set up in the uh, variable section of that platform app yaml file please stay tuned for the next video it's actually going to be about redis and setting up redis as a caching backend for your project to make it screaming fast on platform sh thank you very much we'll see you soon